Hi, I'm Erin and the owner of Educated Nurse and today we're going to do an educational quick video on EKGs. It's going to be the first in one of our series on EKG assessment and interpretation. And the first one's going to be on normal sinus rhythm because if we don't know what's normal, how can we talk about what's abnormal, right? If you're new to us, you can follow us on Facebook, Instagram, like and subscribe to our YouTube channel. And then we also have an Etsy shop where we sell all of our study guides, templates and merch. So follow along. Here we go. Normal sinus rhythm. Okay. First of all, what's normal, right? So I, like I said, we have to figure out what's normal before we can figure out what's abnormal. So what's normal? There are 10 points to normal sinus rhythm. And my mom, who's a cardiac nurse, taught me this a long time ago. And now I share it with my students. 10 points to normal sinus rhythm. If you meet all 10 of these points, if it walks like a duck, it talks like a duck, it is probably a duck. We're going to dive into this. Heart rate. A normal heart rate should be between 60 and 100, right? So if it's outside one of those ranges, you automatically know it's not normal. Rate and regularity. <clears throat> and rhythm and regularity. It should be regular, right? And we're gonna talk about how we figure out if it's regular or not when we dive into this a couple of slides from now. Is there a P wave? And we're gonna look at what that measurement should be. Is there a P wave before every QRS? Cause that's important too. What is the PR interval? And we're gonna measure that. What does the QRS look like? Is it normal? What's the measurement? What's the time on that? Is the ST segment at baseline? And we're gonna look at that. What does that look like? What's the measurement look like? How high is it if it is elevated? Or is it depressed, right? So we're gonna look at that. Is there a U wave? We're gonna talk about what scenarios cause a U wave and most patients aren't gonna have a U wave on a normal sinus rhythm, normal EKG. Are there any early beats and are there any late beats? All right, so we're gonna break down these 10 steps. And like I said, all 10 points lead to normal sinus rhythm. So if it walks like a duck, it talks like a duck, it is probably your normal sinus rhythm duck. So let's dive into it. Heart rate, like I said, normal heart rate is between 60 and 100 for an adult. Less than that would be bradycardic, greater than 100 would be tachycardic. So we wanna hit that 60 to 100 beat range. How do we figure that out? Well, the easiest way is to count those QRS complexes over a six, six second interval. Most EKG paper will specify if it's three seconds or six seconds. If you look at your EKG paper on the top of the EKG paper, there's usually little hash marks. If there are hash marks, it's usually three seconds, but verify with your EKG paper what that is. If you count your QRS complexes in your six seconds and multiply it by 10, that gives you your heart rate for a minute. So for example, you can see this EKG down at the bottom, there are seven QRS complexes, seven times 10 is 70 for your heart rate for this particular EKG. Next up is regularity in rhythm. In normal sinus rhythm, the rhythm should be regular. Regular means that the P waves, which is your atrial rate and your QRS complexes, which is your ventricular rate, march along at a consistent and regular interval. How do you measure that? It's simple. The easiest way my mom taught me how to do it a long time ago, take an index card or a white piece of paper, hold it up above your EKG and make a hash mark on the first P wave, make a hash mark on the second P wave, and then take your paper and then spread it out and move it along and they should march out at the same rate. Your hash mark should line up for every P wave that you got. Do the same thing with the QRS. Put a little hash mark on the top of your QRS and then a hash mark on your next QRS. Take your piece of paper and march it along. They should march along at an equal distance and they should march out at a consistent rate and interval. You can kind of see down here on the slide that those P waves are the same distance as they march along. And you'll easily see if something is abnormal because those hash marks won't line up. As you march them out, they won't line up. And you'll know. And sometimes once you get good at reading these things, you'll just be able to see that it doesn't look right and regular, right? But just get a piece of paper and march along. You can also use calipers, which are these little metal tying things that help you with your measurements. You can set them and march them out and that'll work too. Um, 
but honestly, I love the paper method. It works just great. It's super quick and you don't really need any fancy dancy in anything. You just need a paper and a piece of pencil. All right. So you can march it out, but normal sinus rhythm, the rhythm should be regular. All right. Now let's talk about the relationship between electrical conduction and the waveform itself. So when I was talking earlier about the P and the QRS and the PR interval and the T and all the things, let's figure out what it really means. Okay. So you can kind of see in the picture and then the EKG, the P wave is atrial depolarization. For me, for the longest time, and I've been an ER nurse now for 10 years, for the longest time, that makes absolutely no sense to me. I don't know why, but depolarization to me makes it seem like it shouldn't be doing anything. That's wrong. <laughs> it means atrial contraction. Okay. So the P wave is atrial contraction. Now the P wave starts when the SA node, which is up in our right atrium fires and sends an electrical impulse across the atria to the S or excuse me, the AV node. So the SA node fires travels across the atria to the AV node you know that the uh, rhythm is coming from the SA node primarily when you see that P wave start. Okay. So the P wave is atrial contraction or atrial depolarization. And the timing on that should not be any longer than 0.12 seconds. And when we look at the EKG, that is um, three little boxes of time. Okay. The PR interval is AV conduction time. So how long it takes to travel across the atria over to that AV conduction or to the AV node. And then that is the conduction time of your PR interval. Again, it should be between 0.12 and 0.20 seconds or three to four little boxes. And one little tip about the PR interval, it's not actually the PR interval because you start it when you start the P wave and then you measure all the way to the start of the QRS. So just a little tip, even though it's the PR interval, I always just remember it as the PQ interval, okay? The QRS complex is ventricle depolarization. And again, to me, that seems wacky. It seems backwards to me, but I like to go with contraction of the ventricles, okay? The contraction of the ventricles is what we actually feel. Like if we were to take somebody's pulse, we're going to feel that QRS, that ventricle squeezing. Okay. It's not normally longer than 0.12 seconds or three little boxes. So when you measure the QRS, that's the width that should be. The T wave is ventricle repolarization. Okay. So the ST segment, which we're going to talk about in a second, but the T wave is ventricular repolarization. So it's gearing up to do its thing again. It should be rounded and symmetrical less than four little boxes or 0.16 seconds. And then we're also going to measure the amplitude, which is how high it is. Okay. And we'll get to that in a couple slides. The ST segment is where the bottom of the QRS comes back up to the line and it should be at baseline. That ST segment should be flat at baseline. It should not be elevated. That could be a sign of a heart attack and it should not be depressed or that could be signs of ischemia. We want it flat at baseline. That is when the heart should be at rest. So if we see any alterations, it could indicate that the heart is having to work when it should be at rest. So that is ventricle repolarization. And then the depolarization is that ST segment, which should be flat at baseline. Okay. So let's dive into these a little bit further. The P wave. Again, the P wave is atrial depolarization when that atria is going to contract. Okay. It's generated again from the SA node in the right atrium and that electricity goes across the atrium to the AV node. In a normal EKG, we're in normal sinus rhythm, the P wave is going to proceed or come before QRS. That's one part of our 10 points to normal sinus rhythm, right? There should be a P wave and there should be a P wave before every QRS. It looks like a small bump. The amplitude is how high, okay, is normally 0.05 to 0.25, all right? And then the duration is not longer than 0.12 seconds, how long it is. Um, so this EKG here on the screen is three boxes, so it is 0.12 seconds.
all right? And it's usually nice and smooth and rounded. It shouldn't be spiky or depressed or anything like that. The PR interval or PQ interval um, indicates AV conduction time from the start of that contraction all the way to when the ventricles are gonna start to depolarize. Okay, so you can see it's the start of the P to the start of the QRS, even though it's the PR interval, it's actually the PQ interval. Okay, and normally it's going to be 0.12 to 0.20 seconds, so three to five small boxes. It should be regular. Um, if it's not within that time frame, and maybe you see as you're looking at your EKGs that it's longer and then longer and then longer that could end of an indicate a heart block, okay? So it should be a consistent interval for all of your PQ or PR intervals, all right? The QRS complex. The QRS complex is ventricle depolarization. This can tr um, triggers the contraction of the ventricles, so when the bottom part of the heart squeezes. Because it's larger tissue mass, the QRS is going to be larger and bigger than the P wave. Okay, the measurement is going to start from the beginning of the QRS to the end of the QRS, and it's going to be between 0 0.06 and 0 0.12 seconds. So one and a half to three boxes, somewhere in there. If it gets wider than that, then we're going to start to look at some ventricle dysrhythmias, which we'll talk about in another video but it should be narrow and it should be equal looking um, and it should have a nice spike. It shouldn't be really wide or tall or depressed or anything like that. Follow the measurements. The T wave and the U wave. The T wave indicates repolarization of the ventricle. So this is when the heart should be resting and gearing up to start over and do the atria squeeze and the ventricle squeeze. It's slightly a, um, asymmetric, excuse me, asymmetrical, okay? It always follows the QRS complex. You will always have a T wave. You might not always have a P wave, okay? T waves should be rounded and we don't want them taller than five millimeters when you're looking at amplitude. And again, you can measure that with a caliper or some other measuring device. Um, T waves should not be really tall, okay? If they're as tall as a QRS, that's a problem. We always say tall tended T waves is too much potassium. And then if you have a U wave, you shouldn't normally have a U wave when you're talking about normal sinus rhythm. Uh, my mom always says a pretty girl makes U wave. Nope, low potassium makes a U wave, right? So a U wave is a small rounded bump that comes after the T wave really indicative of low potassium. So a tall tented T wave is too much potassium and a U wave is low potassium. Okay, the ST segment, <clears throat> super important. The ST segment is the early part of ventricle repolarization. The heart should be at rest at this point. If we see any elevation, we would think about a heart attack. We could also see depression of the ST segment where it goes below baseline that can be a sign of ischemia. Either way, not good, okay? Um, normally, again, the ST segment is flat at baseline. It can be elevated, but it should not be elevated too much. When you see that thing as high or to the middle of the QRS complex, you should automatically be thinking some sort of cardiac event is happening, okay? And then you need to investigate further, maybe with serial EKGs or some labs to back it up. But I would definitely be thinking about a cardiac event if I see that ST segment high or low below baseline. Okay, so with normal sinus rhythm, again, it has to meet our 10 criteria, right? So let's look at those 10 criteria again for normal sinus rhythm. The rate is 70, and we know that because we're going to count all the P waves. And there's one, two, three, four, five, six, seven P waves. So we know our atrial rate is 70. We're gonna count our QRS complexes in our six second strip. And there are seven, seven times 10 is 70. So our heart rate is 70 for this six second strip. Then is it regular? How do we do that again? We're gonna measure from P wave to P wave and QRS to QRS and march them out. And so we will see that this is regular. Is there a P wave? Yes, there is a P wave. Remember, I said 
There's always going to be a T wave. There might not always be a P wave. So back up that last hump right after the QRS. That's your T wave. And then look forward. If you don't see anything that's missing a P wave, in normal sinus rhythm, there is another P wave there. Okay. <clears throat> so in this situation, there is a P wave. And if we were to measure it, it looks like it's about two boxes. That's normal, right? That's 0 0.08 seconds of time. And there is a P wave before every QRS. So we know that the SA node fires, it sends electricity across the atria and the atria squeezes, and then it goes to the AV node. The AV node then fires and sends electricity down through the bottom of the heart where the ventricles then contract. So the atria contracts and the ventricles contract. And it does this in a regular pattern. Right, our P wave and our QRS marches out at a regular pattern and rate. All right, then you look at the PR interval, and that measurement looks normal. It looks like it's about four boxes, so that's fine. The QRS is about one and a half to two boxes, so that's a normal measurement. Then we look at the ST segment. And the ST segment in this EKG is at baseline. It's not elevated or depressed. That's normal. There is a T wave, but there is no U wave. There are no early beats and there are no late beats. And again, we know if there's early or late beats because we take that piece of paper and we march it out by time and measure those P waves and the QRSs to make sure that they're marching out at an equal distance. In this EKG, all 10 points lead to normal sinus rhythm. If it walks like a duck, it talks like a duck. It is a duck, and our duck is normal sinus rhythm. So when you're looking at EKGs and you're asking yourself, does all these criteria meet? If they all meet, then they say, yes, it's normal sinus rhythm. What is the rate? Is the rate between 60 and 100? Yes. Is the rate and regularity, is it regular or is there an abnormality? If it's regular, we're leaning towards normal sinus rhythm. Is there a P wave? Yes. Is there one before every QRS? Yes. What's the PR interval? Is it normal? Yes. Is the QRS normal? Yes. Is the ST segment at baseline where it should be? Yes. Is there a T wave? Yes. Is there a U wave? No. Are there early beats? No. Are there late beats? Nope. If you can answer all 10 of these questions every time you look at an EKG, if it meets your criteria for normal sinus rhythm, it is normal sinus rhythm. If something is abnormal, that's when we look at atrial dysrhythmias and ventricular dysrhythmias, which will be another video, okay? But if it meets all 10 of these criteria, you've got normal sinus rhythm, all right? Thanks for watching our quick educational video on normal sinus rhythm. Check back often because I'm going to start adding some other EKGs on atrial and ventricular dysrhythmias. We're also going to dive into treatments and what we need to do for those patients that have those dysrhythmias. All right, so stay tuned. Like and subscribe to our YouTube channel. Uh, if you're interested in more things on EKG interpretation, we have a study guide in our shop, in our Etsy and our Shopify shop that breaks down all the different types of EKGs with practice strips and over 50 practice questions. So check that out if you need to learn more about EKG interpretation. Otherwise, uh, follow us on Facebook and Instagram for all the new updates and educational things that we're working along as long as well as some new merch. Thanks for joining us and we'll see you next time. Bye.